Good morning and welcome to the White Boat Studio in beautiful Sozopol in Bulgaria. I'm Martin Stevenson and uh, Julie Horner from Facebook's Watercolours Techniques and Tips I think is a accurate name for it has asked me to do um, one on boats and reflections. Um, we actually live opposite a harbour so this is a scene I see most mornings and it's um, it's our next door neighbour called Eftim, who has a fish restaurant. So this is a close up of it. And I've taken a still of it, so if anybody wants it for reference, just let me know. Um, right, let's make a start. We've got some materials here. These are Tintoretto uh, tube paints that I've squeezed into my palette. <clears throat> because I need access to a lot of blue in this painting, I've actually got um, cobalt and I think there's ultramarine in there with a touch of um, cerise and this one is one of my favourite colours which is Caput Mortem which you can make by mixing vermilion and ultramarine. I've also got a couple of jugs of water and a motley crew of brushes which I keep in here sloping down so that the paint doesn't drop off the handles. So I've got a flat brush, a couple of rounds a dagger brush and a rigger, a uh, needle point brush. Uh, if anybody needs to know anything about the materials that I'm using, just uh, let me know on Facebook. Um, okay, so to start with, I want to prepare these paints. So I'll probably be using something like it's a mainly um, coolish painting, it's an early morning scene, so I might have some mist along here. And um, the light is actually coming from the right hand side, so I'll make a note on that. It's something I usually do just to remind myself. It's not so bad with this scene because it's quite simple. But if you're doing a complicated scene, it actually helps you to remind you where the light is. I did consider, consider whether or not to... Um, so this would be highlighted, this part of the boat. This part of the boat would be in shadow and yeah, so the light's going to come from kind of low down on the right hand side. Um, so it's a coolish painting and the only thing that's going to be hot is um, is actually Eftim's jacket. Um, there's a reference photo available for this as well. Um, so just let me know again if you, if you want a copy of that. Um, I'll probably put it on the start of this video. So I'm going to take photographs and, and do a video of the process. It's one that I did uh, during a live feed, but when I was watching it back, the quality wasn't very good of the sound and it kept buffering, so hopefully with my new HD camera, we'll have a, a better result this time. I've got a couple of jugs of water, one for mixing my paint and one for washing my brushes out. Um, so let's start off by spraying some of these colours. I'm going to use the orange for the jacket, probably one of those. And I will want something for the concrete wall. This is a nice neutral burnt umber and ultramarine. I'll have plenty in there for the sky and plenty in there for the hills. So I'll just mix those up now and then we can prepare. I usually start from uh, back to front, so I'll do the the sky first, a little bit of pink in there, I'll make it a little bit warmer. Because we're doing the sky um, wetting to wet, sorry you can't see that can you? <laughs> Let me move this. I'll move it back once I start painting. So I'm going to mix that. I've got a sponge in the bottom of this jug. Um, and that just protects your expensive brushes or your cheap brushes. <laughs> this is Caput Mortem. And I usually use a test strip just to check the tones. Because we're going to be painting the sky and probably the hills and the water wet into wet, I can actually overcompensate by having the paint a little bit thicker than perhaps I need. So to get recession in painting. Uh, the distant hills over here are the furthest away so I'm going to be painting those about in this tone and then I'll gradually make it uh, deeper and deeper as we come into the 
the middle ground there. It's still quite a way away. It's about three miles across that bay. Um, so that's my cap of mortem. So I'm gonna, I wash my brush out in between. I also have a dirty rag or some kitchen roll just to wipe the brush on in between each application. So that's our blue. That's okay. So let's make a start. I'll just move this across and then I'll start the camera again. I know some people have um, problems um, painting boats but you can actually simplify the shape particularly with one of these um, old-fashioned boats and it's basically just a, have a, look, a kind of flat figure of eight so if this was say the front of the boat You can just rub out the lines that you don't need, and that's how I, that's how I usually draw them. Obviously, we're looking down on this one a little bit, so it's a bit broader figure of eight. But that's how I approach them. Um, just a, a so I've got all my paints mixed up now. So the light's coming from the right, and I'm going to use some movement in the sky. When I use a sky colour, if I want a stormy looking sky. Um, I'll add a bit more red to the mix and that'll give us a kind of purpley colour. Um, so, but it's not a nice bright sunny paint in this one. Now I'm left handed so when I paint, I paint from um, from the right hand side over to the left. If you're, if you're right handed you'd do it the opposite way around. But you can either do a plain blue sky or you can do one with clouds in it. So, just Make sure you can see that. It's probably handy having the light above it because you can see how wet this paper is. If you hear that noise, that means it's to dry brush. And it's time to dip back in the water or the paint again. Use quite gentle strokes. This is 140 pound Bockingford rough paper, which is one that I can reliably get here in Bulgaria. So I've got to know its properties. Now you can either leave some gaps in the sky if you want some hard edge clouds, or if you want soft edge clouds, just cover the whole paper. It's quite warm here this morning. We've had a thunderstorm overnight. I'm cutting around these hills, so the paper's going to dry quite quickly so the golden time today which is the time it takes for the shine to go off the paper is probably not going to be very long at all so I may even have to re-wet this area of sky before I actually dump into the paint if you want to get right into a corner just lift your brush a bit more vertically sorry if I'm a bit nasal this morning well a bit of a cold so up here it's started to dry a little bit now, so that's when I started. And you can see that the paper is bellying up. This is just fastened down with masking tape. And if you learn to control this, I usually paint on the slope, but it's not great for the camera angle. So I've covered the whole of that area, I think. Let me have a look at that. Yeah, it's starting to dry again in the centre. We'll just re wet that area. And it's important to have the paints mixed up first. So, straight into the paint. And I will leave some gaps in the sky, and these will give me nice soft edges. And it's just the same brush strokes. If I'm teaching, children I usually say imagine it's like stroking your pet cat and the sky above you is usually darker and it's always nice if you can vary this from one side of a painting to another and as we get towards the bottom I'm not going to dip into the paint again because the sky's lighter the further away it is from you. I'll, I will tip the board up as well so we'll just try and get some movement in this sky. Painting carefully around these mountains. 
you want clouds you just leave a gap or you can use tissue but I prefer not to you get a more subtle cloud try not to have a halo around that mountain these are aerials on the top here so they're going to be dark I think and then if you want some movement all you do is tip your board up and kind of watch the magic happen so the right's coming from the sorry the lights coming from the right indicated by the arrow so if I just tip it and hold it at one angle you can get the effects of rain and then once you're happy with it just sit it down now if if on the if on these hills I wanted misty effects I'd let that I'd leave that for a minute to settle and then I would actually paint these mountains certainly the distant mountains and just let that bleed up into the sky but I, I want quite a hard edge in this painting it's all about Eftim, his boat and the reflections in the water so we'll uh, we'll just let that dry now and then uh, we'll carry on with the mountains okay so the sky's dry now I concentrated with a hair dryer just above these hills the rest of it will carry on um, working while it settles I really should have I usually mop around the uh, border as well but I forgot to do it it's not the end of the world okay so we'll start with the so we've got the weak um, Caput Morton mix which is by the time I've done it wet into it it's going to be lighter than this so we'll start with the most the most distant hill so just real carefully just float a puddle of water on there it wants to be just a sheen these corners are really important as well. And we'll try and indicate some early morning mist. So straight into my cup at Martin. As long as it's deeper tone than the sky, that's what I'm after. I use the same technique if I'm doing mountain scenes as well. But the trouble is if you leave any white areas it looks like snow which is great for snow scenes but not great for a nice summery day like this one okay so I've just uh, wiped my brush off where are we there um, and it's just slightly moist and I just want to lift off a little bit of lighter colour on the on the right of that mountain and if I want a misty effect just again with a slightly moist brush just soften the bottom edge you can actually turn the board upside down as well if you want the, that water to float in but there is um if you add too much water to it you end up with a cauliflower now normally i would let that dry if i wanted a hard edge or carry on if i wanted a soft edge so i'm happy with a soft edge because they're actually covered in trees so this time i'm just going to use this neat i'm not going to do it wet into wet i'm going to do this wet on dry and they'll probably bleed together just where these two mountains meet so same technique really carefully up to there you'll notice I don't do an outline and fill it in because you've got to try and keep what they call a wet edge that's floating into the other one it's quite warm today so I've got to not hang around doing this and lift my brush up vertically when I get into these little Corners. Didn't do a good job there. Okay, and we'll finish off down here. Don't like that straight line, so we'll break some of that up. Wash my brush out again. Take the moisture out on my cloth, and I'm just going to rub this on this bottom edge, and then that starts to look like mist. And once you get into these, this distance. Um, as it comes forward you might start seeing some trees here but I'll just wipe my brush out and again just using a sideways sweep I'll just try and get some contours on the sunny side of this hill and I'll just correct this little area here where well, I was a little clumsy okay now on to the bigger mountain the nearest hill, I'll use a bigger brush for this 
And again, I'll paint this wet on dry, and it might it might just bleed up into there, but that's okay. It'll all add to the mistiness of the whole thing. So now I'm mixing this a bit stronger, and exactly the same technique. And again, not outlining, just carry that wet edge up onto that ridge. And by doing this, you end up with what they call recession in painting, which is into the paint again. You could hear the dry brush sound. It gives you distance in paintings if you uh, start with pale in the distance. So the lightest thing is usually the sky. Wash my brush out again, take most of the moisture off and I just want that misty effect here. You can see it's bled up there which is quite nice. I'll do the same thing, wash my brush out, take off a highlight off this front edge, particularly at the top here. Try and make sure the shapes are different. The other thing that you can try as well is you can load some paint onto a toothbrush if you want trees on this hill. Or you can actually, the alternative is to actually use a little brush and just, let's say over here, let's encourage some cauliflowers. They look like trees in this. And down here, there's actually a camping ground, so I just want to indicate that. Take my moisture off the stock of the brush, otherwise it will drop in. And I use this technique, I usually call it something like Morse code. Because it's just dots and dashes just to look like buildings. It's important to end up with a, as perfect a horizontal line as you can get. Steal some paint from there to put over here, and then you just get the illusion of of distant buildings. Just give you a close up of that. So now we'll let that dry before I start on the water. Okay, I'm I'm happy for this to be uh, wet, and I can carry on painting simply because we're going to leave a white line. Um, the sea usually gets very dark on the horizon, but for some reason there's always, I don't know if it's diffracted light from the sun, but there's usually a white line underneath something as distant as that. So that means I can carry on. So I'm going to start off with a tiny brush and we'll make this in indigo. Just leaving that real fine line on there. I'm just going to soften this bottom edge because I want to switch to the other blue shortly. If you want waves, just leave some white areas. Let's have that a bit stronger. That way we'll get a nice contrast with that white line. And we'll just leave some waves showing there. I've got to work quite quickly because of this drying time today, which will be about four minutes, I think. So on flat water, you usually find that the sky colour is a reflection of the... Sorry, the water colour is a reflection of the sky. It's not usually absolutely accurate, but it always makes for a nice picture. So because we painted the... Uh, sky wet into wet. I want to do the same here. So I've got to keep this wet edge going And if it bleeds down, it's okay I'm Using the big flat brush for this because I want to go around the fisherman quite carefully and I'm trying to make sure that all my brush strokes the secret of painting water and reflections after all, that's what the lessons is about. The lesson is about is to make sure everything is either perfectly horizontal 
are perfectly vertical. So it's vertical for the reflections and horizontal to represent the flat water. If you'd sit the heel of your hand on on the um, on the board, you tend to get curvy water that goes down at each edge. Now, without washing my brush out, straight into the sky colour, it should end up being around about the same tone. I'm going to go right up to that. It's a kind of sea defence wall. I need to use a tiny brush around there. So I'm making sure that these brush strokes are. Pretty much horizontal. Sorry, I'm in vertical. The reason for that is that now I can switch to a horizontal brush stroke. And if you want some dry brush, if you end up missing some areas, or you end up with dry brush, it'll look like the sparkle on water which is always nice to have somewhere in the foreground. So now we've got the boat on the water. So now we've got to sit the, we've got to work quite quickly, although I've painted that quite wet. So, But I want to make sure that I've gone round the boat very accurately and there's a little area in there that I need to get. Excuse it if you can see my head, a bald spot. And while I've got that small brush, I'll ground this boat. Grounding is a trick you can use to make something sit on another surface. But it's important that this paint that I put on there is stronger, I'm not sure it is, than the wash that's already on there. I'm just going to indicate that this is just sat on the water. And then just let beautiful things happen with it. Also, the light's coming from that side, so there may be a shadow on the water. And now for the reflections. Big flat brush. Squeeze all the moisture out of it. And I want to... This is going to be the light side of the boat. So I'll sit my brush on and just sweep down. Now you might have to do this a couple of times because when we painted it this way it's got a tendency to bleed back in. So we'll just see how that settles. And then we've got the dark reflection on this side. So for that we'll use Caput Mortem which I know is a good shadow colour. Perfectly vertical strokes. And then the reflection of the fenders in the water would be right below it here. You don't often get this amount of reflections on a on seawater generally, but it always looks nice for a painting. You can make those shadows as long as you want. <laughs> this one's bled back in again, so I'll just have another go at that. Every time you do this, you're taking uh, moisture from the paper, so it's drying. So the best thing to do is not fiddle with it too much at this stage. We can always lift out later on or, or out of dry, a dry wash. I'll just get rid of that bit of moisture there. And then the trick to getting this to look like water now is to just break some of these lines up with perfectly horizontal marks and they just break up those shadows and that's how I approach um, doing reflections just make sure I get this perfectly horizontal just here and I'll just wipe around and we'll let that dry and come back to it in a second. Okay, that's dry now. 
Um, it's usually at this stage that I uh, put a mount on it just to see, just because it isolates it from the the colours on the board. So look at that. Looks quite broody with a dark mount. So the next thing I'm going to paint is the the seawall and the sea defences at the end there. And for that I'm going to use a mixture of, uh, I'll probably darken the bottom. So what I usually do when I'm painting is I usually do the big things stood up and then I sit down for the smaller things. So I'm just going to have a seat. So we've got some rhomba here. And I've already got my dark mixed up there. I've got Caput Mortem here. But I want the light to come off the top of this wall. So this is straight. Just going to do a bit at a time. And because that's, I'm going to stand up to do this because I need a better angle on the brush. I'm going to just leave a little gap of white there. This is a concrete wall, so it's not very attractive. And then as we get to the bottom, I'll introduce a dark. Again, it needs to be thicker than the wash that's already on there, so I'll switch to my cap on bottom. If you just touch with a corner of the brush, you get the effects of stone taking care around his hat. Back into my, you notice I didn't wash my brush out there. So I want this to be quite contrasty. It's always nice if you could then get the lightest part of the um, painting against the darkest part. It's called counter change, I think Ron, Ron Ranson used to say. Again, taking care around the shape of the boat because I want to preserve those whites. I'm just bear in this mix to give it some texture. And then, as we approach here, you start to get them strange looking big concrete things for the sea defences. Now, as I get to the end here, because the background's quite dark. I'm going to have to go really dark with the, it's a kind of a beacon for the entrance for the harbour in bad weather. So I'm just letting the paint mix up on the paper there, a bit more cap on bottom here. So I'll get a small brush out now. So I'm mixing this cap of mortem as strong as I can now. It's almost neat paint because it's got to stand out from that background hill. You can see that that does. If you go too dark too soon you end up with nowhere to go and then I'll just add some shadows on these things put a rock in the water I'll have a go at indigo for this this is where you get round the headland onto the open sea just have a few more suggestions of darks in there It's actually got a beacon on top. I ought to know what colour it is from one side to the other. I've forgotten. Is it port to the left and starboard to the right? And just so we can get the reflections of that, I'm going to use a dry brush now to lift out some reflections in this water. Only on the sunny side of it. I 
and now I'll just use a moist brush with some caput mortar in for the reflections of under this wall. I'm quite happy for this to be quite weak. I'm just going to use a, a moist brush just to soften it. I have a shadow in there. And this hard hard edge wants to disappear, so just a horizontal sweep. Make sure the boat's kind of reverse painted around that boat. The mast here with the light on, I'm going to lift that out once uh, once it's all dry. The purists wouldn't like it if I painted with white paper, <laughs> with white paint. Okay, that's dry now. So let's do some lifting off. So right to the bottom of your jug, big flat brush. Take all the moisture out of it, making sure that there's none on the stock. And then if you just squeeze it slightly with your fingers, and then just rub it on the heel of your hand, like so, that's the flattest part of your hand, you'll see that, that goes to a knife point. So if you use this brush really vertically, we can lift out almost, it should come almost back to black paper, uh, white paper. And the more vertical you use the brush, the more effective this is. Got to keep washing your brush out, but it's only a small area that I'm doing. Then just dab it with tissue. Just do a bit more further down in the water. Some colours are very staining and others aren't. I think there's some ultramarine in this which is pretty staining. Don't want that to be too thick, that's okay. And then let's have a, a few more highlights on the water. So we kind of lost this one, but it's in the paler part of the water anyway. But let's have a bit more here from the fender. Sometimes I'm not sure if I don't prefer lifting paint off rather than <laughs> adding it to the paper. So we'll just get a few more. See if I can get it back a bit brighter. I'll probably use some oh, bit of tissue on there. <laughs> I don't need a new piece of toilet roll. Okay, so we've got a few more highlights now. So now I'm going to concentrate on the dark side of the boat. So the light's coming from the right. So I'm going to really carefully paint the under this. I think they call it a rubbing strip. So this is the shadow side. So a tiny brush. Real strong paint, and I'm painting the shadow side of this rubbing strip. And basically, if you want a hard edge, you'll let it dry, but if you want a shadow underneath it, and it's a trick I use for the eaves of boats as well. Is just use a moist brush. I quite like that, I think it's yeah, quite like that. Then underneath the boat, it's usually got anti fouling, which is a terracotta colour, so we'll have some of that. Make sure there's no water on the stock. Again, this is another bit of a hot colour. Just put a hint of it down here. And I might just wet that. And just let it bleed into the water. Oops, a bit much there. That's because I didn't wash my brush out to the bottom. Look all right there. I'm going to have some. I'm going to have some turbulence from the back of the boat, which I'll have to do with gouache. I think. Could have used masking fluid, but I don't really like it. Okay, now this this is just slightly moist. So now I'm going to change to my cap up mortem. And I'm painting the shadow side of this boat now, so under here is really important. Around the fender. I actually did consider whether or not to do the light from the other direction. Just that I could get some highlights on these fenders, but we can use artistic license. Down the side of this rudder. 
and because of the curvature of the boat while that's still wet I want to indicate this curve so just with the same brush now use a small one this time I'm going for indigo I'm just adding it to it and I'm kind of using it in the direction of the planks of the on the, the way the boat's made this is a really important piece just there and while I've got this paint on my brush going to the capital most on this time so this is the sunny side and all I'm doing is indicating where the planks are and we'll have a dark line down that side of the rudder he has a very particular stance does after him when he goes out fishing he stands again let that bleed he stands with his hands behind his back used to go used to see him going out quite a lot but I don't think he's going out as much these days like us all we're getting any, not getting any younger but I'm going for a really strong blue now for this strip on this boat so I'm happy to leave a white gap there right at the top so to indicate the sun I'll make it paler as we go further away and this is just um, ultramarine blue oops went a bit wide there so I'll just make it all that wide and we'll have some indication of lettering on the back of the boat and just let that bleed and then we'll go for the a real dark inside this cabin but I quite like to use some ultramarine in my shadows when I want it really deep it granulates really nicely. This wants to be pretty accurate. And I may just lift some of this out with water just so it doesn't look like a big flat block of colour. Go carefully down to that strip. Wash my brush out. And I'll just indicate some light coming through here just by lifting off a little bit of paint. Do the same on the dark side of this. I'm looking at this now and I think this needs to be even stronger. So I may come, come back into that. And I think I'll use indigo. Shadow side again of the side of this cabin. Try and keep that a little white. Shouldn't really do this while it's still wet, but what we will. This is where you end up with mud. It's better. And then we'll let that dry. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much dry now. This is the bright side of the boat because it's facing the sun. So I don't want to put a lot of colour into here, otherwise I'll lose the definition of the shape. So I'm going to do this wet into wet. Efton looks after his boat really well. But we might add some rust to it. So I'll start with just little spots of very weak cap at bottom. I still want this to appear white. But I want some detail on the shadows around there moulding of the door that would be on this side do that wet into it a bit of detail around here top of the door and then just with some 
terracotta colour, so this is English red, or burnt sienna, just touch it with and let it run down, put a bit down here as well, you won't thank me for that. So it still appears white, then on the inside of here, what left hander's disease. I'll reverse paint around the grab rail and the light. We'll keep that area light, not this dark. Bit of a shadow under there. And then just to make it appear curved, just rub some water against it. Then on the fenders, we'll do that wet into wet because that's a curved surface. So um, light's coming from that side. So what I'll do is I'll just wet it all. Then just with a little bit of shadow colour. If you haven't got Caput Mortem, I think a lot of ranges do neutral tint and that's pretty much the same thing. And I'll just add some to the dark side of those. Might add a stripe to those in a, a little while. Let's have, uh, you know, actually got any instruments on this boat, but let's have some. Have a little overhang there for the roof. And then we'll have a little blue stripe on these fenders. Should wait for that to dry, really, but it'll do for now. of aerials on the top of this hill just in Capot Morton. Make sure my brush is on a point. There's some buildings under there so I'll just ground those two. <coughs> and then I want to do the dark side of this um, so I could use a brush. No, I'd like to use a ruler. But I've got a mouth stick which is a homemade piece of plastic pipe with some masking tape on it. So I want to get this mask done. So I'll just hold that really carefully and still if I can without touching my painting. And I want this to be quite strong because it's against that. So I'll do this in indigo. That's just the dark side of it, and then I think it's a light for when they're fishing at night, and it's held on with bits of tape, as they would. And then we'll just go left him to paint. So we'll wait for that to dry again, and then we'll come back to it. Ok that's dry now, so we can make a start on uh, Eftim, I'm not sure if it's bone dry, but... So what I've done is I've given myself some fresh water for this, because I want the these to be one of the cleanest things in the painting. Oh, those fenders are dry now, so I can put them little stripes back on. And I've just done the uh, bit more work on that. So I'm going to mix some orange up, I think it's a mixture of cad orange deep and cad orange, so I want this to be the brightest thing in the painting. So that's prepped clean water, not very good at figures but we'll have a go. So a little bit of water on my tiny brush. Because the um, lights coming from the right. I'm quite happy for just to do part of this wet and then we'll keep the highlight on the other side. So into my cad orange. This is for his G 
jacket, you can see how that will make the painting really pop. Do some lifting out on that side. And then while that's still wet, wash my brush out. And I'll lift the highlight out from the right. So it will be light on his shoulder. His arm wouldn't be. Then we'll add some detail on that while it's still slightly moist. So this is the shadow side of him. So his arm, this side would be dark. And I want this to bleed, which it is doing. He's got his southwester on. There might be a shadow there, a shadow under his arm. And if you want to blend those shadows, just with a slightly moist brush, and I'll come back and define them a bit better. He's got his collar up. And then I'm going to paint his hat. He's got a white cap on, it's like a captain's hat. He's got a shadow on this side. He's actually looking to the right. And then we want to re wet the water area. Because we want orange reflection down here. So I'm going to do about the same distance as he is above the boat, just leave that gap. Just a vertical sweep, trying not to disturb the pigment underneath. And it should be a bit paler because we've done it wet in wet. If you just tip your board up and just encourage that to run downhill, but try and keep it completely vertical and try not to put too much water on either. So now we've got the reflection of Efton in the water, and it's just a quick. <coughs> and then I'll come back to define the figure. I think I might do that now because it'll still be. It'll still be slightly moist, so it'll still work. A bit of definition on his hat, a shadow underneath his hat. And shadow there. And down his arm. Something happening down here with his hands. And then maybe this light reflection in the water so that would start round about here if you want to indicate some bit of movement dab it with tissue and then finally we'll just let that dry and then we'll just pick out some highlights with some white gouache and we're done okay so now for the final highlights we've got we'll have some turbulence at the front here the wake of the boat. Uh, I've lost the shape here, so I might put something there. I'll highlight his shoulder. We've got some turbulence in the water here, and I might put a little bit of white just to make that look a bit thinner. And then we're about done. So I usually use the uh, white glass from the lid and make sure I have clean water. If I'm using it with students, it only takes a little drop of red to get in there, and the whole pot will turn pink. So, tiny brush wiped on a tissue to make sure it's really nice and pointy. And we'll get these back. Too much coffee this morning. So, just think about the direction of the light. Where would the highlights be? So, on this top edge which we lost. Get that back, we'll get the shape of this rudder. Have a couple of little highlights where the ropes are going around. Holding the fenders on. 
Got some lights on there. A bit on his shoulder. Maybe there. Just try and do this freehand, I think. Say to students, if you're doing anything delicate like that, stop breathing. Sometimes I have to remind them to start again. White gouache is addictive. Okay, and then a bigger brush for the details in the water. So when the water comes from the front of the boat, it would be under there. And quite a lot coming from here. And these just indicate movement in the water. The dry brush at this stage of the painting works as well. And that's how I approach painting boats and reflections. Just have a look at the look of the mountain. Yep, looks okay. Wait for that light to dry. I'll just show you around some of the detail. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, have a go and post your uh, results on watercolour techniques and tips on Facebook. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now.